What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another film and novel combination review. Or maybe the first, I don't I don't actually keep track of how many I've done. But in this case it's going to be my comparison for the novel and later film um, adaptation for The Martian. So I had a chance to read the novel, or finally get a chance to read the novel. I bought it some time ago and never got around to reading it. So I thought, you know what, let me give it a shot, read it, see how I feel it holds up to the film. And in general, I found that the novel was very good, and my memory of it feels like they adapted the film very well. So I decided to give the film a watch, so I did watch the extended edition. I don't really remember or couldn't really tell what parts they um, did add from the theatrical release, so I'm not really going to cover that part. It's going to be more of kind of the general changes they made from the novel to the film, but what I found is that the things that they changed were well or done well enough to the point where it didn't really feel, or it became rather than something that feels like it was missing, it was done for a creative translation into the film because showing a lot of that stuff on the in the film would have made it infinitely longer and a lot less I want to say less dramatic and interesting not not to the point where you would have thought that it was, or one would have thought that it's irrelevant but it would have just felt rather redundant and lengthy in the film version so of the things that they kind of had to summarize and reduce in the film was all the various journal entries that Mark Watley provided in the novelization. So they summarized that well enough throughout the film to provide uh, progress updates on what he was doing. Um, so I found that that was, they translated that well enough into the film where they, to progress the film further, they summarize some of the important points but not include all of them that we saw from, that you can see in the novel. So that was one of those things that was well done. One of the other things that was well done was um, in the um, uh, transformation of the map in order to get to Pathfinder and ultimately the Ares 4 map in the Scara Peli Canyon. I probably said that wrong anyways, but um, they translated that well, well as well in the film without bogging it down with all the science and stuff that they had to, and um, engineering that they presented in the novel. So while it, one would initially think that it was missing in the um, film, bogging it down with all those details would have been tedious and probably would have glossed, um, gone over a lot of people's heads. So they resolved it well enough, in my opinion, when Mark says that he's going to science the crap out of um, the Hab and basically to survive on the planet. So that resolved it to the point where um, it kind of prepares the viewer to um, understand and know that what they're about to see and hear is going to be a lot of uh, scientific stuff, engineering, botany, and all of that, but they're not going to bog everyone down with technical terms and lingo and all of that. So while it is important, um, it would not really have translated well enough into the film, so um, it worked out well in the way they presented it, where it was more showing Mark doing all those various things rather than telling us what he's doing. Um, and one of those, or one key example of that is when um, Mark does find the Pathfinder and has to hook it up to the map. In the novel, they talk about how they needed to download the firmware and or update the firmware and the software and use a lot of um, computer code in order to make that link up possible. So they summarized it well in the film, but there was a it was more elaborated on in the novel to the point where it's easier to read than visually show that and may not have really worked well in a visual presentation and could have also led to extra scrutiny on what's going on. So by consolidating that, that worked as well. And then also when they do get the Pathfinder camera or the camera up and running, um, rather than elaborate on it, or they c translated that well in rather than using a full 26 letter alphabet and not being feasible to under for Mark to know what they're pointing at using the hexadecimal system uh, worked out better. Um, in the novel they do ultimately use Morse code a lot more because of the dots and dashes makes it easier than even hexadecimal so it was kind of, in the novel it was kind of a switch between the hexadecimals and the Morse code. In the film they just stuck with hexadecimals. 
but they did summarize that well enough. Um, but aside from that, um, that was really, um, that's really the nitty gritty of it. Um, the one thing that they did cut out in the film versus the novel is that in the novel, when uh, Mark is finally heading over to the Scara Valley crater, um, he does encounter a storm which NASA is able to see, but because he, Mark doesn't have any communication with him, he doesn't know that he's in the storm until he's in the middle of it, and ultimately has to set up a system to triangulate which direction the storm is going so he can go in the opposite direction. I would not have really minded seeing that in the film, but it would not really have added much to the dramatic situation of it. And it probably would have added, I don't know, maybe 5 to 15 minutes to the film. So, granted, it would have been interesting to see that storm, but because they already had a, they started off the film with a storm to put Mark in a predicament and then they had to have um, imploding, not really, and then, uh, and then also with all the various other things that he had to go through, that would have kind of been an extra problem to deal with. And then with the um, Earthside issues, as far as the rocket exploding with the uh, food shipment prior to the Shang Yang rocket being used to get to the Hermes, um, it w would have started to feel kind of lengthy by adding another bigger storm. Even though it could have been kind of it could have been summarized as far as um, having to get around it and kind of being like that bot that final boss fight and then the relative ease as far as getting from the map to the Hermes would have been the icing on the cake so it was good enough to not or it was fine that it was not included it would have been nice but did not by not including it it did not take away from the um, overall dramatic effect of the film so that and then beyond that um, the final um, rescue scene uh, by the Hermes of Mark and the Mav was changed a bit where in the novel um, the Hermes crew entirely uh, rescues Mark using the tether system. Um, they do bring up in the novel as far as running out of tether and cutting it close so there was that big a bit of traumatic tension whereas in the film they changed it up a little bit where the tether did run short and Mark did get to ultimately use his Iron Man maneuver in order to um, get to Commander Lewis, so I in this case I kind of prefer the um, novel version because it was more scientific, reasonable, and logical. That it's easy, it would have been better to have someone tethered to the ship to get to Mark rather than having Mark fly around and have too many variables. The change up that they made as far as Mark not being high enough in the atmosphere was fine, but it's one of those things where it. That the film version works better in film because it's more dramatic and tension filled rather than running out of cable and not having enough cable to get there. So, um, I know why they did it, but the novel version would have been a ni nicer icing on the cake than what they did, even though Mark was fully behind the Iron Man maneuver. But visually, it worked, so that's neither here nor there. But overall, I want to say that the film did a very good job of translating what the novel presented and also brought over Mark's personality um, in general and also with the crew very well. So um, the thing with the um, um, disco music was there. They didn't include the Aquaman bit from the novel, which was kind of a bummer, but they did um, translate or they did merge the disco scene with um, his log. So that kind of worked out well enough. Um, his use of curse words, well-placed curse words was good. His interaction with NASA once they could talk, that was all good. So all the stuff, that, all the key points that were in the novel were translated well into the film. So it's one of those things where I don't want to, I can't really say that the film is worse than the novel because they translated it so well that it's not that much worse. I mean, I give the novel a grade of an A, whereas the film, I'd probably give it an A minus just because of some of the stuff that weren't, wasn't there. But the stuff that they, that they did include was translated well enough to that point where without, by having seen the film initially in 2015 and not reading the novel, I wouldn't have guessed anything was missing. And for me, watching the film after reading the novel, when um, Mark was heading to the Scarab Crater, it looked like there was a storm approaching. So 
I want to say that felt like a little bit of an Easter egg and nod to the novel. So even though they didn't include that, they had that nod that, okay, yeah, there is a storm, but we're not going to include it for creative and film length reasons. Because, you know, a two and a half hour film of a guy alone on Mars and then adding another five to 15 minutes for a storm would have made it that little bit more lengthy and would have lost that audience at that point. So there is that. But overall... Um, I would recommend reading the novel and watching the film. If you watch the film first and then read the novel like I did, you're, you'll see the differences, but when you rewatch the film after reading the novel, you can see a little bit more of how well they did and why, why they made those changes that they did. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, or want to provide feedback of your own, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is uh, PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And as a patron, um, there's a bit of an update there. Uh, look out for the show notes post coming this week for the January episode of Headphones Neil News. Um, and if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see that I provided an update as far as my start, having started the replay of Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords, but this time from the point of view of going full Dark Side or Sith Lord. So that's all there is for this episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.